Hello, my name is Hiran Workman and I'm a realtor with Hiran's home team at Dia Realty and thank you so much for watching our video blog today. We're here to give you tips, education and information about pertinent real estate matters. Today we are going to be talking about the five most common contingencies that we are seeing in purchase contracts that are coming in to our office. Basically when a buyer makes an offer and the seller agrees and accepts it on paper, uh, we have a fully executed contract, but the final sale of that property is contingent upon several things happening. and the home passing uh, to the satisfaction of both the buyer as well as the mortgage lender who is providing the money for that buyer to actually purchase the home. So there's many different clauses and contingencies that a buyer can put into a contract. What we're going to be talking about today are the five most common that we're actually seeing on purchase contracts as the contracts are coming in. So the five that we're going to be covering today is the home passing, the home inspection, the radon inspection, getting through the appraisal process, uh, contingent upon the home meeting uh, good termite inspection, and then finally the mortgage actually getting approved so that the buyer can get the money to close on the home. So let's talk about the home inspection. After a home uh, gets a purchase contract and it gets accepted, the buyer will order a home inspection immediately. Uh, depending on the time of the year, it's taking about, I don't know, maybe up to a week for a home inspector to come to the home. The home inspector will be there for about three, four hours to, in total. Uh, for most of it, they'll be there by themselves and checking out just everything from the roof, the attic, electricals, HVAC system, foundation, they'll be checking everything out. And then towards the end of that inspection, the buyer's agent and the buyer will meet that inspector at the home to go over the findings. And then at that point, the buyer has a couple days to kind of think it over and they'll do one of three things. The home will pass the home inspection, everything is to the satisfaction of the buyer and they will release that contingency and move on to the next step. Uh, or if they don't like the home inspection at all, basically they will use that home inspection contingency to terminate the contract and end the deal. But what will likely most happen is that the buyer will put together a repair list of items to send over to the seller and then the seller will have a day or two to think about it and either accept all those repairs to be made prior to closing or they can also counter back. So as long as the buyer and the seller agree on the repair items, basically an addendum will be put together to release that home inspection contingency and then we'll move on to the next step of the closing process. Now along with the home inspection, a lot of buyers will uh, complete a radon inspection and you know the buyer can actually hire a separate radon inspector to go and uh, you know put the radon kit down, but what will happen most likely is that the radon inspector will also be that same home inspector. So. They'll drop off a radon test kit at the home, they'll put it in the basement, they'll pick it up in about two, three days, and as long as the radon test kit comes in at a level acceptable by the EPA, which is less than 4.0, basically it will automatically release that radon inspection contingency and then we can move on to the next step of the closing process. If for some reason that radon test kit comes at a 4.0 or above, um, that is stated to be an unacceptable level by the EPA. A lot of these mortgage or uh, real estate companies, they have addendums and contracts that will pre-print in there that if the radon test comes at an unacceptable level, the seller will agree to install a radon mitigation system prior to closing. So as long as you don't just have a crawl space and you have a regular basement, what we're seeing a lot of the uh, estimates come out at for the radon mitigation system is about $900 to about $1,000. So after that contingency, basically uh, the next item to get through is the appraisal process. The lender will order a, an appraisal from a third uh, party and basically there's going to be most commonly you know, three types of appraisals, either a conventional appraisal, FHA or VA appraisal. The conventional appraiser will come out and determine the fair market value of that property. They'll put a dollar amount and either the home is going to pass or it's not. So if the appraisal comes in at less than the sales contract price, uh, the buyer will have an opportunity to back out of the deal and terminate the contract. So 
uh, the FHA and VA appraisers, they're going to be there too to determine a dollar amount on the value of the property, but they are also there to do a second job, which is to determine if the home passes VA and FHA insurable standards. So the type of repair items that they're looking for are bad roofs, flooring, loose handrails, shipping paint, wood rot, you know, and other items to make sure that the home is going to pass those insurable standards. And if it's not and they tag those items, basically those repairs have to be made before uh, a buyer can get that type of loan, a VA loan or an FHA loan. And a lot of homes go uh, FHA, so definitely those repairs, you know, should be made by the seller. And then if we get through all of those contingencies, uh, the next will be the termite. About a week to about a week and a half prior to the buyer's closing date, the title company will order a pest termite inspection. And the termite inspector will go out to the house and they'll look for termite damage, they'll look for carpenter ant damage, and as long as the home passes and there you know, is no damage, basically they'll put together a confirmation letter stating that the home passes and it automatically releases that condition contingency so that we can make it through uh, the final closing process. If for some reason the house doesn't pass, what they'll do is they'll put together a repair estimate and a lot of these brokerages, they'll also have it pre-printed into the contract that if the repair estimate comes out at less than 2% of the sales price, the sellers are pre-agreeing to treat for it so that it releases that contingency and then we can move to the final closing process. If for some reason the repair estimate comes out at over 2% of the sales price, then either party, the buyer or the seller, will have an opportunity to back out of the transaction and terminate the contract, and of course the earnest deposit will be returned to the buyer. Uh, in the whole, I don't know, 10 plus years I've been doing this, I've never had a contract fall apart because of termite damage. Normally it's a few hundred dollar fix, the sellers fix it, and then we make it to closing. So the final process that I would like to talk about is the final underwriting of the mortgage uh, contingency that we need to get through so that the buyer actually has money to make it to closing to buy the home. Uh, you know, at Huron's Home Team, we try to take every measure so that the buyer is pre-approved and ready to go. So, you know, the pre-approval letter that comes with the initial uh, sales contract, it means that the buyer has already contacted a mortgage broker or a lender, given them uh, preliminary information about themselves to get pre-approved for the loan. And then they show up with a pre-approval letter that's submitted with the contract and we know that uh, chances are they are a very likely candidate to get the final mortgage so that they can actually buy the home of their dreams. Now. Uh, you know, throughout the process, you know, the mortgage uh, broker lender, they're going to be asking for documentation to support the information that they provided up front. They might want paycheck stubs, bank statements, tax returns and any other information that the mortgage lender or broker is needing to underwrite that loan so that they can pass uh, and you know make it to closing. Will a buyer's loan ever fall apart during the middle of a closing process? Well, it could. For example, if the buyer had a job when uh, they applied for the mortgage, and if they lost that job between that 30 to you know 60 day closing process, chances are that they will not get final loan approval if they've lost their job. But chances are good that people are going to keep their jobs and uh, get the final loan approval. So those are the five most common contingencies that we have to get through to actually close on a home. Uh, when the initial sales contract comes in, the buyer will put up an upfront earnest deposit and it's typically made to uh, the title company. The title company will cash it, put it in escrow, and basically that money is held there until final closing or until the contract terminates. And typically the way it happens is that if uh, the house, uh, the appraisal process, if we don't pass every single contingency that was written into the initial sales contract, what will happen is the contract will terminate and that earnest deposit will be returned to the buyer from the title company and then of course the seller would have to put their house back on the market and try to find another buyer. So if there are any questions that you may have regarding the video blog that we just went over today and as always if you or someone you know is looking to sell or buy a home within the next three to six months please call us for a free no obligation home buying or selling consultation. Thank you so much for watching today and we'll see you next time.